It's a sad day at Grant's prison. But we knew it would have to happen sometime. The place won't seem the same without the younger brothers. I know. I, I know. I just can't believe it. You seem like only yesterday you turned the key in the lock and you said, Welcome. Does seem like only yesterday, doesn't it? Well, you just have a way with you, Warden, of making 12 years fly by like a <sighs> blink of eye. <laughs> Here, here. It's awful kind of you to say that, Cole. Well, none of that. Goodbyes ain't easy, but uh, we just gonna make the best of it. I'm sorry. Besides, it don't look so good in front of the guard. I know. Good luck, Lonnie. I watched you grow up here. I'm still growing. Almost like a son to me. Take good care of yourself, huh? Bart. Warden. Bart. Warden. I don't know how I'm going to replace you in the garden, Bart. Whenever I bite into an onion, I'll think of you. Every time I smell one, I'll think of you, Warden. Great feeling to know you rehabilitated three of the toughest the West has ever known. Well, life goes on. Back to work, Clark. Almost time for dinner call. Must have lost my watch. My wallet's gone, too. But I know where they're at. Where? With your gun. Get the men together! for the shack come nightfall. Not over here. Let's head back and try the creek. Shh. They're coming back. If any of you men spot them, shoot to kill. The only place for the younger brothers is six feet under. <laughs> Lonnie! Sorry, Cole. Boys, <laughs> we're here. <laughs> Money, keep an eye peeled at the window. Right. Bart, <laughs> find something to pry up the floorboard. You bet. Money, how does it look? Pretty dark. Well, I know that it's dark, but do you see anything out? How come you got that eye closed? Uh, just resting it. Resting it? Yeah. You see, I figured it's going to be a long night, so I gave my right eye the first watch, and now, from now, my left eye will relieve it. Relieve it? It grieves me to think we had the same daddy. Here, here, this ought to do it. Oh, that's fine. Now, uh, which board did you hide the guns under? Which what? board? 
Well, what are you, an echo? I said which board. Now just calm yourself down and give me a minute. It has been 12 years. It's going on 13 years. Which board? That one right there. That's more like See, I told you you could just give me a minute. Give me a hand and prime it up. This one. Would you help me pull up this board? I just know this is the one that's it. Well, the odds are getting better all the time. All right. All right. Let's get out. One, one two, two, three. Oh. Oh. Oh, hey, my back. Oh, well, here. Lean on me now. Come on now. Can you make it? Yeah. Over here. Oh. Oh. oh, 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 that's better. Yeah. Was it under there? Uh-uh. I'm sure I know where I hid them guns if you just give me a minute. Oh, you said that last night. You don't remember bird brains, so don't, don't, don't give me any more of your bunk. That's it. What is it? The bunk! I told you I could find them if you just give me a minute. What are we going to do now? We ain't going to shoot anybody, that's for sure. Wait a minute. Wait a cotton-picking minute. What are we acting so down in the mouth for? We never shot nobody before, did we? Well, did we? No, but in, in the old days, everybody was so scared, everybody was afraid to do anything. Right. Yeah. Uh, people probably even forget to be a scared. Wrong! If they're scared of the Younger Brothers once, they can be scared of us again. All we've got to do is build our reputation again. Well, just how do we go about that without getting ourselves killed? We start small. You remember the little bank over in Silver Hill? Oh, yeah. That's what we're gonna hit. First. It's Silver Hill, all right. I might have been mistaken, but I think it was a lot more crowded the last time we passed this way, Cole. No, never mind. We said we was going to start small, didn't we? Yeah. Kill 
one another. This is it. Cover me. You can stop covering me now and give me hand. My foot is caught. Uh, hold on a minute. Be careful. Don't twist my ankle. Oh, 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 don't. Oh. There you go. Oh. Oh. Check the safe while I put on my boots. First thing I'm gonna do if we ever make a good haul is get me a new set of boots. Beautiful boots. A fine song. Oh, me. Oh. Hey, look, that's Cole. Hey, Cole, you okay? It's all right as could be expected after being blown halfway across the street. Well, we're sorry about that, Cole, but we got the mailbag. Well, we got to get out of here while it's getting good. That explosion will bring half the town. Let's move. Yeah, Cole. Oh, Cole. This is a sad one. Listen, my dearest Herbert, I feel as though you've been gone forever. Even though it has been a few days, my tears are turning. Oh, shut up. I don't care about Herbert. But it is sad. I'll tell you what is sad. The younger brothers pull a first job in 12 years and wind up with a handful of letters. Now, that is sad. Well, now, Cole, I, I don't think nobody's seen this when we was in Silver Hill. Well, let's hope not. All right. There's no use crying over spilt milk. All we got to do is find us another bank, a bigger bank, one that's just, well, chock full of money. We need us good horses and, well, I need me some boots, too, because these Dear Mr. Itch. Cartwright. Oh, shut up with those dumb letters. Wait a minute, Cole, this one ain't so dumb. Listen, dear Mr. Cartwright, I'm sure by now you have received my bank draft for the $15,000. Now, I will be needing more horses in the near future, and I hope I can do business again with you, yours truly, James Parker. Let me see. Yeah, whatever bank this Cartwright fella has his money in must be chock full. And look, they got horses to boot. Which envelope could come out? Wait a minute. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Mr. Horse Cartwright. Virginia City, Nevada. Well, take a look at that man. Yeah. We'll take the road through Barton and then head south. All right, now you head due north till you pass Barton. Then you take Stoner Pass and due east to Glover's place. Got it. Shouldn't take you more than oh, three, four days round the trip. I got the supplies you wanted loaded in the wagon. Oh, good. Enough there for a party of 12. Oh, good. You won't take any chances, little brother. Well, you're all set, then. Big opportunity for this horse. Oh, I know you'll handle it well. Don't worry about a thing, Paul. So you have to carry all that cash with you, but old man Glover just won't deal any other way. Well, like I told you, Paul, don't you worry about a thing. A whole gang of outlaws couldn't take that money away from me. Like's been run through a meat grinder. I'm hungry, Cole. We ain't never gonna make it to that Virginia city unless we get some money for some food and horses. What's that racket? I don't know. We'll go check and find out. No, Lonnie, that little pinky is the one that's killing me. It's a stage! What? A stage! A stage. Well, uh, diggity dog, we've got something to rob. Oh, boy. <laughs> give me, give me, give me that rope. 
no, uh, uh, tied to the end of a tree. Uh, Lonnie, Lonnie, you run across to the other side of the road. As soon as the stage gets close, you pull up and make the stage stop. Uh, and Lonnie, Lonnie, stop. And then wait and cover us, huh? You bet you call. Lonnie! Yeah, well, take the end of the rope with you. them sacks. It's just mail headed for Virginia City. You ain't fooling nobody. Throw down them sacks! All right. All right, hold it. You two make a move, I'll fill you so full of holes they'll never find your belly button. Do you really think that the younger brothers are so dumb they put away their guns and not have you covered? Lonnie, fire a little shot for the gentleman. Well, fire it now, Lonnie. Lonnie! Bluff ain't gonna work, younger. Put your hands upside the stagecoach. All right, Jake, tie him up. I thought we'd seen the last of you boys in these parts. But I guess some folks just never learn. We'll have to deliver you with the mail. Oh, oh. I'll eat that fur. A hold up. Get up. Get up. Let's get out of here! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, looks like I got here just in time. Well, you certainly did. Did either one of them robbers hurt you fellas? No, no, uh, thanks to you, uh, Mr. Uh... Cartwright, horse Cartwright. Cart... You own a ranch named the Ponderosa? No, that's, that's my paw. He owns it. Well, what do you know? Uh... My name is, uh, Sawyer, and this is my guard, uh, Mr. Uh, Finn. Well, I'm happy to meet you, gentlemen. Let me help you with them bags. Uh, no, 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 there's no need. I no. got nothing better to do. I got plenty of time. I'm just going into Barton to get a bath, a good night's sleep. There you are. We don't know how to thank you. Don't even try. It's the citizen's duty to see to it the mail gets through, gentlemen. That's true, if anything ever was. <laughs> yep. Well, have a good journey, fellas. Uh, same to you. Yeah. Well, sure is a small world, ain't it? <laughs> Bart, hmm. go find that stupid brother of ours. All right. He's probably asleep under a tree. Come to the right place. Only stable in town. Cost you 20 cents apiece to bed them down and 30 cents for feed. Fine. Uh, just 
keep the extra 50 cents and make sure they got plenty of grain. Uh, it ain't worth an extra 50 cents. Only feed a horse what he needs anyway. Well, just keep it anyhow, huh? I was aiming to. Oh, howdy, Sheriff. Those were the days. What can I do for you, stranger? I was wondering if I could find a place around here where I could get a bath. Well, you could use one. Right around the corner, Barton's bed and bath, best in Barton. Much obliged. Yes, a moment. the bank. We robbed the stage, and all we got to show for it is a bunch of dumb letters. I'm hungry. Oh, shut up. Stop reading those letters. Oh, I ain't heard nothing, Cole. I've been in jail 12 years, and I never got me a letter. Now I've got a whole mess of them. But they ain't to you. Oh, neither were the ones I didn't got. I think I'm gonna be sick. We gotta get us some money. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we sell a stagecoach? It's in good shape. Hey, here's another letter to that fellow, Mr. Cartwright. Dear Mr. Cartwright, I just wanted you to know the seed bulls have been rounded up. Seed bulls. There are not gonna be any disappointment, I promise you. Sorry about Hoss having to carry $10,000 in cash, but I'm an old man, and I can change my way. Oh, my best, Harvey Glover. $10,000. That fella that helped us rode off with $10,000. And we rode off with the dang mail. Oh, it's like you always say, Cole. No sense. Oh, shut up! He said that he's going to spend the night in Barton, right? Honey, honey, honey. Please. Nobody saw you. Why don't you ride into Barton and find out where this Cartwright is staying? Then we'll all go in and pay him a visit. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> you boys ain't so slow to grasp. I'm dreaming of Jeannie with the light brown hair. La, 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 la. Tim, all right, Sheriff. I couldn't forget that face anywhere. He's one of the younger brothers. Sheriff, I've told you 15 times, if I've told you once, that my name is Hoss Cartwright, not Younger. And for the 16th time, Younger, we got two eyewitnesses who have testified they seen you a riding and a shooting and helping them brothers of yours rob the U.S. mail. And I've told you that that was a mistake. I should hope to shout it was, and you made it. Look, Sheriff, if you just send somebody to Virginia City, they'll tell you who I am. Look, younger, two eyewitnesses is good enough for me. I ain't going to waste the taxpayer's money sending no deputy to check on that phony story of yours. Then you ain't gonna do nothing. I'm gonna give you a little piece of advice. Plead guilty and throw yourself on the mercy of the court. Thanks a lot, Sheriff. I don't know what I'd do without you. 
think nothing of it. Yes, sir. Can I help you? Yeah. Uh, you, you got any good beds? Barton Bed and Bass got the best beds in Barton. Oh. Oh. Sign right here. Business is kind of slow. He only got but one customer. Ain't even got him. He's in jail. His name ain't Cartwright, neither. It's younger. He's one of them younger brothers. Yep, here's your key. Hmm. No, no more. A younger. They think that sodbusters are younger. Well, he looks about as much like a gunfighter as. Never mind. He's got to break into that jail. It'll be a new one for us. We spend 12 years trying to figure out a way to break out of jail. We've been out a week, and now we've got to figure a way to break back into one. Broad daylight. Yeah, in the top two. I mean, that's when we're going to do it. Broad daylight. They won't be expecting us, Sam. We'll just come in as big as you please. Come on. Let's ride. Stop reading those damn letters! Get you out, partner. Oh, oh, no, you don't. No, no, you don't. You fellas got me in enough trouble like it is already. Listen, you wouldn't stand a chance here with the trial. If you stay here in town, they're going to hang you. If you don't go down, I'm going to shoot you. Them's my choices. Uh -huh. I'll go. Oh. Where's the money? What money? The $10,000 you had on you. Now, don't you lie to me. I read your mail. The sheriff's got it. Where? It's in the money belt. Well, where's the money belt? It's on the sheriff. Oh, the keys. Cole's gonna skin me alive. <laughs> oh, come on. Hurry up. We gotta get out of here. Move. Well, what do you want me now? I ain't got no money. We'll figure out something. Give me the keys. For what? A lock. You put that lock on the door? Well, of course I put the lock on the door. You told me to lock it. When I said lock it, I didn't mean lock it. I meant bolt it. Well, if you meant to say bolt it instead of lock it, why didn't you say bolt it? How are we gonna get out of here? Always prepared. Excuse me, friend. I, I didn't see you. <laughs> Oh, get him 
out of here. If I ever get my hands on the man I stole this cigar from. What happened? I think the stage just held up the jail. A little darker on the mustache. Heavier, you know what I mean? And the hat even higher on a big one. I know it's hard to believe, but it's the biggest hat I've ever seen. Now you're getting it. That's it. Well, what do you think? That's it. Uh-huh. Get this over to the printing office. I want them posters in every town for 200 miles. Kind of a big reward, ain't it, Sheriff? It'll be worth it to be the sheriff responsible for capturing the most vicious gang the West has ever known. Only a question of time before they strike again. What price do you put on human life? You're right, Sheriff. Besides, it was there ten thousand dollars anyway. Ain't you feeling any better, Cole? No, I ain't feeling any better. Well, I wish there's something we could do. You've done enough already, both of you. I'm hungry. Why don't you go out and blow up a rat? I told you it was a mistake. It wasn't your mistake, Lottie. Moss and Moss. 35 years ago. Thanks for not blaming me, Cole. I got nothing. Hey, uh, fellas, these, these ropes sure are tight. A couple more days without anything to eat, they'll loosen up a bit. Oh, I wish you wouldn't talk about food. I wish you wouldn't talk at all. I'm thinking. What you thinking, Cole? I ain't had enough quiet to find out. Shh. I've got it. Bonnie? Bart? I've got it. I've got how we're going to make some money. Well, how? Well, this here Cartwright had $10,000 on him, right? right? Right. And in that letter you read, somebody sent his paw $15,000, right? Right. right. Now, you want to see your pappy again, you tell me how to get that Ponderosa ranch of yours. Just having a long talk with Sheriff Coffee. Oh, uh, but what? Uh, this. The younger brothers, they're still at it. <laughs> I thought they were. Hoss? Uh, yeah, that's him, all right. Uh, Sheriff Coffee said the reward's being offered by the sheriff and Barton. What for? Oh, nothing serious. Uh, stage robbery, assaulting an officer, blowing up a jail. Well, that's right. Howdy. I, I'm looking for a Mr. Ben Cartwright. That's me. Well, I'm in luck. A and so are you. I bring uh, regards from that wonderful boy of yours. I hate to take money like this. It seems uh, almost dishonest, but... The younger brothers have had a run of such rotten bad luck. Look, you promise that Hoss will be returned safely. I always say if you can't trust the word of Cole Younger, whose word can you trust? I always say it, but they always mean it. Your son cut me to the quick. Look, I promise to get Hoss back here as soon as I get back with the money, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right. We trust you. Well, I'll be on my way. You certainly have a lovely place here. It's an inspiration. It makes a man wonder if uh, honesty ain't the best policy. It's so hard to change late in life. Bye. 
Think we ought to follow him? No. No, I tell you what we can do, though. We can ride to Barton and get this mix-up straightened out with the sheriff. Yeah, we'll settle up, huh? Horse younger. saddlebags. I don't suppose to do any good to tell you there's nothing in these bags but a bunch of old letters. It'll take more than that to fool the James boys. Now hand over them bags. Thanks, old timer. That's right, Jesse. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. What is this world coming to? Sheriff, I, uh... Just a little... This is important, Sheriff. I'm almost finished. It has to do with this wanted poster. You got information about these men? I sure do. That's my son. Is that a fact? That's a fact. Well, that's not a fact. Here's two. You said so yourself. No, I, what I said was that he was my son. If but he's your son, and he's a younger. Then that makes you a younger. Don't take no genius to figure that out. Now look, I told you, my name is Cartwright. And so is his. Now, all you have to do is to wire Virginia City. And anybody... if he ain't younger, then how come them other kin of yours come in here and busted them out? I tried to explain that to you, Sheriff. They came in here to get the money. $10,000. And how come they didn't take it? I don't know. They, they made a mistake. They made a mistake? Yes. Younger brother's the most notorious gang of robbers in the old West. Come in here to steal ten thousand dollars, and then they just plumb forget to take it. What do you take me for, young? Oh, would you stop calling me that? I told you my name is Cartwright. Oh, you're just two peas in a pod, the both of you. He tried to pull that phony name business on me too. I want to tell you something, younger. I've been sheriff a long time, and I know the look. What look? The look of a criminal. That big young in of yours has got it, and you have got it, too. Sheriff, this is ridiculous. i tell you what's ridiculous. You rant and then rave, and that's what's ridiculous, because ain't going to do you no good. The judge will decide when he rides through here next month what to do with you. Next month? Next month. I'm hungry. And you thinking, Cole? Yeah. Me too. What are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? Ask you first. I'm thinking and I'm worried about what you're thinking. Well, I've done my best. I know you have coal. We ain't blaming you nothing. It's just that nothing seems to be working itself out. No. But I've got it. I've got money. Yeah. Bart, what have we done wrong so far? Everything. I'm. I mean, what laws have we broke? We ain't hurt nobody, and we still got those letters that we stole. Yeah. Well, what about the money you took from his paw? I can't do nothing about that. I was robbed. What are you getting at? Just this. All we wanted when we got out of jail was a little steak so as we could settle down, right? Right. Well, there's only one thing we can do. Turn ourselves in. They'll send us back to prison. I bet we'd only get one or two years, and when we got out... We'd have our stake. What stake are you talking about? The reward, the $10,000 reward. Don't you see, if we turn ourselves in, that'd be just catching yourself, huh? Well, I suppose so. Sure it is, Lonnie. I'd go in for life if they give me something to eat, Cole. Wake him up. Younger brothers is headed for town. 
coming. Sheriff, they're coming. Simmer down. Who's coming? It's the younger brothers, the whole gang of them. So, them kin of yours is on the way to bust you out. Well, we'll be ready for them this time. I'll deputize every man in this town. You can't. Why can't I? There ain't no man left. Everybody left town when they heard the youngers was coming. Then it's just you and me. I deputize you. Raise your right hand. Sheriff, don't be a fool. Let us out of here. No. In years to come, younger, this day will be wrote up in the pages of this magazine. And the Sheriff of Barton will be remembered as a man that died with his boots on. Up. That's an old trick, Cole. It won't work. Trick? Why well, won't well, well, trick you? So you can bust out Ben and Joe Younger. Never heard of no Ben and Joe Younger. We come give ourselves up. I told you. Shut up, Younger. Cole, if you want in here, you're gonna have to blast your way in. Well, I wish you'd change your mind. That's my final word. You heard him, Lonnie. It's hard to believe what a man has to do to get himself arrested. Sheriff, for the last time, you're making a mistake. Maybe so, younger. But it'll be my last one. Lonnie, can't you do nothing right? Oh, it grieves me so much to think that we're kin. We just want to give ourselves up. Hi, Paul. I told you I'd get him back safe and sound. All right, let's go. I still think we're entitled to that reward, Mike. You talking about my $10,000? It don't seem right if you put it that way. Hoss, you think you could manage to get this to Mr. Glover without any problems this time? Yes, sir. How much obliged to you, Hoss, for dropping them three off at Grant Prison from you? My pleasure, Sheriff. Let's go. Well, I'm sorry about the mix-up, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, that's all right, Sheriff. I, uh, I figure you were doing your best. Now, Mr. Cartwright, uh, I'm about to write up the report on how I 
captured the Younger Brothers. And I was just wondering if anybody was to talk to you. Uh, um, Sheriff, you can rest assured. Whatever you say happened is the way it was. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Hard to believe. You sure did have that look. Sonny. I don't reckon you'd believe that there ain't nothing in them bags but mail, would you? No, I wouldn't. Throw them down and get them passengers out here. Well, they ain't got no money, and besides, they just... Is that you, Cole? Daddy. Benches inside, Mrs. Summers. You take a seat while I unload the bag. Thank you. Excuse me, ma'am. Would you be Rose Beckett? Why, yes, I am. Oh, good. I'm Horse Cartwright. I'm Ben Cartwright's son. Oh, I'm delighted to meet you. Glad to meet you, ma'am. Uh, that shotgun out there referred to you as Mrs. Fuller. That sort of threw me for a minute. Oh, well, well, I'm Rose, <laughs> and this is my daughter, Bluebird. Oh, howdy. Uh, could, couldn't your father come? No, ma'am, he sort of deputized me, but he'll be back at the ranch by the time we get there. Oh, it'll be good to see him. Yeah. Well, can we uh, get your bags and go? Well, I'd like to send a telegram before we go. Uh, we only have two bags. Bluebird knows which ones they are. She could show you. Oh, fine. Come on, Bluebird. My, what a pretty name you've got, such a little girl. I'd like to send a telegram, please. All righty. Traffic's a little heavy here today, but we'll get it through for you. Okay. Where's it going? Uh, to Mr. Mosner. M-O-S-N-A-R, Fort Baker, Nevada. Just say, arrive safe and well. And how do we sign it? Love, Katie. All right. As soon as this line comes open, we'll send it right off.
that, Mr. Liscom. He one of that ransom gang? I ain't heard anybody ask who you are, friend. Got the message. She's at the Ponderosa. Is that McLeod? Yes, sir. She's here. And I was holding your mother on my knee just the way I'm holding you on my knee now. She was just a little girl, too. She was six years old. Well, I'm almost seven. Oh, well, I think your mother was exactly six. And she looked at me with great big tears in her eyes. And I said, you're not afraid of me, are you, Rosie? And she didn't answer. She was so shy. And then Uncle Ben made a funny face, and I started to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll go in the other room. Give yeah. Bob Singer a chance. I'll yeah. help. No, 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 no,
Well, Chad, there's an awful lot of Browns, you know. Well, he claims to be a company inspector. He even showed me a letter. But, Sheriff, I've had inspectors come and spend three or four hours, not three days. He's been over everything in that office, some of it twice. That ain't normal, is it? Well, you'd know more about that than I would. Most are. M-O-S-N-A-R is ransom, R-A-N-S-O-N. That's clear. Either that telegrapher at Fort Baker was completely fooled, or he's in with him. Could Ransom have a telegrapher with him to tap the line? Every telegrapher has a style of his own, and this came in the hand of the man at Fort Baker. If it's an imitation, Ransom's got a real good man. And their cleverly coded rendezvous, their Christmas tree, that's somewhere between here and Fort Baker. Yes. And anywhere up to a six-hour ride either side of that telegraph line. Now, we've just got to keep watching and following. Brown, I'm Sheriff Coffey. Well, what can I do for you, Sheriff? Well, I understand that you're an inspector for the telegraph company, and I'd like to see your credentials. Sheriff Coffey, step in, if you please. How did you find us here? Oh, just asking a few of the right questions, I guess. May I ask your interest in Mr. Brown's activities? I think you've got the shoe on the wrong foot, mister. It's Major Donahue. Provost Marshal's office, Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. This is Sergeant Brown, Trooper Tui, Trooper Spence. Welcome to my jurisdiction, gentlemen. Our business in Virginia City is strictly confidential. We're in pursuit of an elusive and dangerous criminal gang, specifically of its leader, a fugitive from federal justice. No such thing around here. If there was, I'd know about it. You know about the Ransom Gang? Yes. Yeah. Arizona, Mexican border? The Ransom Gang is in Nevada, Sheriff. We've intercepted their messages. Sergeant Brown is a specialist. Gee, that's good to know. I... I'd better... Do nothing. I know Cody Ransom. From personal contact. And years of watchful waiting. If he discovers me before I take him, I assure you he is vicious. He will wreak his vengeance on the innocent and the helpless. I've heard a lot of stories about that gang, but... I have federal troops at my disposal should I need them. In the interest of the safety of your people, I ask you officially, Sheriff, to do nothing, say nothing to anyone that would expose my position. You understand? Well, I understand, but why Virginia City? Well, I was going to ask you that question myself. You know the rancher Cartwright. Yes. Is there any question of his loyalty or his obedience to law? You don't think he's mixed up in this, do you? I know he is. I make no charge. He is involved, either as a co-conspirator or as a victim of conspiracy, and potentially of violence. Bluebird! Ben? Hmm? Jamie, have you seen Bluebird? Oh, she's been playing around here all morning. Yeah? Bluebird! Uh, find it for me, would you? Would you? Maybe she's around back. I'll look. Bluebird! She can't be far. Here she is. There. Please don't shout. I'm sorry. You know, your mother was calling you. I know. I can hear her. Oh, why didn't you answer her? That's all right. Darling, it's time to wash up for dinner. Can I take my rabbit? Uh, say what, Bluebird. I think the rabbit wants to stay here with its mother. Uh, look, let's just go in and eat. And then after you get done eating, we'll come and pay him a visit, all right? If you need some help, and I think you do, all you have to do is tell me about it, but you must do that. Ben, for six years, I've been picking up the pieces of a life the war destroyed. Just about got it all back. And you are helping. That's all I can tell you, except that well, I've seldom been as happy as I am now. Not wanted in the state of Nevada. I checked that out just in case. And the way she's been described by a plumber and the station agent, she's a, a woman of quality. Well, of course she is. Highest quality. Can't figure her being mixed up in any kind of criminal activity. It's ridiculous. Those monkeys just followed her out to Virginia City, and I don't have any doubt in the world but what they followed me right out here. Well, I should have mentioned my name. That brought you out here, hoping to start up some kind of activity. That's about the size of it. Doggone it, Bluebird. Come on. Oh. 
Doggone it, Bluebird. Now, where are you? Come on. Oh. Ah. Ah. Visitor. Yes, the uh, sheriff. He rode out from town to uh, bring this to you. The sheriff? All this way. There's a man in town, the name of Donahue. Donahue? Yes, Major Donahue. Oh, dear heaven. All right, Rose Beckett or Katie Summers or whoever you are. Let's get to the truth of it. I'm Cody Ransom's wife. Why didn't you tell me this before? Why don't you tell me what you know about Cody Ransom's gang? Nothing good. Well, what would you have said if I had written you and asked if I could stay in your home while I waited for a message from its heartless leader? Would have been the truth. I could cope with that. Cody Ransom is not an outlaw. And that is the truth. And he is not the leader of a vicious gang. He's a fugitive, Rose. You know that. Otherwise, there'd be no need for your deception. I use another name because I have to. Technically, he's an outlaw. I'm not married to a technicality, Ben. I know the man. I know him and I love him. Why were you so upset earlier when you couldn't find Bluebird? And who's this bad man she's so afraid of? Major Henry Donahue. You knew he followed you here? Oh, no, Ben. I would never knowingly have brought this on you. I thought I was safe. I, I've lived in dread of Henry Donahue for years. I, I tried to caution Bluebird without making her afraid, but, but she's such a sensitive child. How long is it since you've seen Ransom? A little over six years. And you're so determined to effect a reunion with your husband that you'd expose your daughter to this? Ben, I've taken advantage of you, and it's too late to apologize for that. But don't reproach me with my child. I've had to teach Cody Ransom's daughter never to mention his name, but to know it, because it's an honorable name. I have faith in my husband. I'm not doing this for myself. But Bluebird has a right to know her father. Not what people say he is, not what I say he is. But to know her father. No matter what he's become. Ben, I'd like to show you something. Well, are those the letters of a man who pillages and murders? No, they're the letters of a lonely man who obviously loves you very deeply but they don't disprove his reputation. You won't take my word. The only evidence you have to the contrary are the stories you've heard. How about this telegram? Meet me by the Christmas tree. Where is the Christmas tree? I'm sorry, I can't tell you that, Ben. Now, Rose, <laughs> it's either me or Donahue. He'll follow you. If you go there now. Oh, Ben. It's not your problem. Well, yes, it is. At least in Donahue's mind, it is. Are you saying you believe me about Cody? Rose, Cody Ransom doesn't mean a thing to me. You do. I'd have helped you in any case. Oh, Ben. Now, where is the Christmas tree? Do you know a... a crossroads called Liscombe Station? I can find it. 
to tell her the whole story. Right from the beginning, the whole thing. Well, when the Yankees captured New Orleans in 1862, they made General Butler a military governor. And uh, he started a black market business. Right. Well-known story. Well, he was getting very rich, and I, I knew it because of Daddy's bank. So, well, I wrote some letters to Washington, and they tried me and convicted me of sedition. Major Donahue was the provost marshal, and I was pregnant with Bluebird, and he locked me in a cabin. Cody found out where I was, and... The ransom raided across the river and got Rose out. But uh, Donahue charged him as an enemy agent. He was tried and sentenced to death in absentia. And by the end of the war, Rance was a colonel of his regiment. But with the conviction hanging over his head, he wasn't about to surrender. He took his men to Mexico. Yeah, Paul, those King Rue court convictions of butlers, will they stand up? Rose thinks the government has some other grievances, too. The whole thing has to be clarified by Sheridan's headquarters in St. Louis. Well, why don't we get word to him? And we will, and to Ransom, too. But we have a little problem here. Sheriff Coffey is sure the ranch is being watched. They're sending a courier. I'll follow him. You go back into town and tell the Major. Me, friend. Wasn't gonna ask you to drop that, but now you got your hands full, once you let it slide right down on the ground. Come on, drop it. Now you and I can ride to Carson together. me up from my nap. I'm oh, sorry. It's bad timing, I guess. That come a long way. Mm. You may be able to help me. I've got a letter here. The Cody Ransom. Mm. Ransom, huh? Hey. Hey, what do you name Ransom? Here he's got a letter for a Cody Ransom. He ain't here. Whiskey's dollar a drink. Boost my horse. That's twenty dollars. I don't aim to sell him. Just want a stall and some hay. Well, that's ten for the stall and that's uh, ten for the hay. They'll eat grass. Don't move. I'll see that letter. Please. If you're Ransom, I'm a friend. Friend or a dead man, ain't nobody around here gives a dang. Now show the letter. Slow. Take it out. Easy. 
Detail. Halt. Prepare this man. This man. Sergeant, reporting mission accomplished. Appears like you boys made a real good haul today. Well, Sergeant, now you look at here. We got us a big fat chicken. We got taters, onions. Yes, sir, there's even a squash to bake up there for the Colonel. Won't no man go hungry tonight. Sorry, Tip. It's purely all we could get. It's all right. I believe you might be able to eat a little squash. You make the entry, will you? Mr. Cartwright. Yes. Rose Beckett once told me you survived the wreck of a ship belonging to her uncle. Yes, sir. The Antelope Packet, 300 tons, off the coast of Cayo de Fuego. Please come in, sir. You don't let on to what you've seen out here, here. What have I seen out here? Isn't this the Ransom Gang? To him, it's the 19th Regiment, Arkansas Mounted Rifles. He's done letters through Hellfire too often to recollect. And we're all of us counting on him to bring us home, understand? No, I don't quite understand. He reckons he done brought us up from Mexico to make a formal surrender of the colors and regiment with honors. That's how he keeps his strength up. We help him to pretend. You have something else in mind? Yes, sir. Seeing he gets to that wife and child of his. Mr. Cartwright. I think I can help you with that. That's what I'm here for. I'll talk to the colonel first, and then we'll discuss a plan. Mr. Cartwright? I'm one of them, yeah. Sergeant Brown, Provost Marshal's office. You step outside, sir, speak to Major Donahue. Well, now, there's only four men down there, Bluebird, and you know how big and strong my brother Hoss is. Yes, he's very strong. Now, well, come here and take a look. See? Nobody's going to get past him. Well, these papers pretty well clear up any question as to who you are and why you're here, but there's one thing missing, Major, a warrant. I'm giving you the opportunity to cooperate, Mr. Cartwright. Return a woman to me that escaped my custody in 1862. You've been watching us all along. I wonder why you're just now making a move. Well, I didn't know until Trooper Tui returned from Carson City this morning the extent to which you people were conspiring. How come you don't just arrest us all, then? I could easily arrest your brother for taking Trooper Tui to Carson City at gunpoint. And if your father's gone to the rendezvous in the woman's place, that makes him accessory to Cody Ransom's crimes and also subject to arrest. Mm -hmm. That is, unless I turn the lady over to you. Exactly. No. Well, Major, the route that my little brother takes to Carson City is all on the Ponderosa. And so would any vantage point that you might have used to have spied on this house. What are you implying? I'm not implying anything. I'm telling you. You and your men are all guilty of trespassing. I see. You're determined to defy me. Nope, not at all. You come back here with a warrant, a legal warrant, mind you. I'll be more than happy to cooperate with you. In the meantime, I'll expect you, as an officer and a gentleman by an act of Congress, to get yourself and your men off of this property and stay off. Good day, gentlemen. The bad men are here, but they didn't get past Brother Hoss. Yes, I know. I saw them running. Any news from Joe? Not yet. Did you find the colonel? Is he all right? Yes. I gave him directions to Badger Camp in the South Ranch. He came on ahead. He'll start traveling tonight. We should meet him in the morning. Oh. <laughs> all right, he's getting out. Mrs. Ransom is right behind me. Would you notify the colonel, please? Yes, sir. All in. The tank.
sir. Bluebird, this is your father. Mistress. Did you hurt your foot, sir? Yes. Yes, I did. Do come in. That... That is... once. You did? My goodness, how? Well, I was running and I stepped on a big old stone. And I never go barefoot anymore, do I? Well, hardly ever. Bluebird, open the box at the foot of my bed and see what's right on top. What's her name? I don't know. Is it a Mexico name? Do you know about Mexico, Bluebird? I just know that it's far away. And it's where you were. Well, the families where we lived work very hard. Even the children do. And still they're very poor. So the fathers make the playthings for their children. And one of the fathers showed me how to make a little doll out of straw for you. Are you very poor? Bluebird, I am the richest man alive. How did he get wounded? He didn't say. Fever hit him pretty hard right after we crossed out of Nevada. Being out of Arizona and all, we reckon we could stop at this little old ranch and ask for help. It scared the rancher, just the looks of us. He opened fire and we turned tail, but his first shot got the colonel. Ain't but a scratch. But his body ain't got the strength no more for the cussed thing to heal. I could ride and get a doctor, Paul. I think it'd be faster to get a doctor if we went right to Virginia City. That'd be the fastest way to get to Donahue, too. Well, I've already discussed it with the Colonel. But I think you two ought to know what the alternatives could be. Yes, sir, we do. And we're going with them right to the end. The thing that pleasures me most is how much she reminds me of you. It's like learning what you were like as a baby girl in all those years before I knew you at all. She's everything we wanted, Cody. And you're everything I promised her you'd be. Sick and hunted. You know what I mean? I'm so happy for her. I'm so much happier for myself. Is that too vain and selfish of me? Not as long as you let me share. We'll rest here. I'll take care of you. I'm a very good nurse. I learned from the surgeons in St. Louis, and... Please join us. I was about to ask my wife to fetch you. Forgive me, I know the time seems short. Rose, I look at you now and at Bluebird, and I find new strength. And Mr. Cartwright has given me reason for hope I never expected to have. I promised him a decision. I've made it. What is it, Cody? Before he comes after me again, I'm going to Major Donahue. Oh, no. Rose, look at him. He can't go on. I thought you'd be kind enough to let us pretend. No, Rose. We joked about it a little while ago. But I don't want to die a hounded, hunted man. You know that Joseph went on to Carson City? Yes, to see General Sheridan, but... No, he can't stop Major Donahue. He does have legitimate charges against the Colonel. He has not. Yes, Rose, he has. I've told Mr. Cartwright. We can't prevent an act of vengeance. Bill Sheridan's a friend. Governor Blasto's a friend, brother by senators. They're Yankees, Ben. This is their justice. 
Cody Ransom is Yankee Justice. Rose, the child. Can hearing this be any worse than what she's been born hearing? What, Rose? A vainglorious father who should have Cody. come home? Cody, stop. That's the way it looks now, even to me. Unless I can clear the slate. It's clear to me. It meant to make a home for us in Mexico. Is that all my daughter's to have for me, then? My past intentions and failures? We can't let Donahue deprive her. Cody, do you think Henry Donahue cares one whit about Bluebird? Do you, Ben? No. Colonel, I'm riding out of Virginia City, but I'd like to borrow your ledger. Oh, yeah, I have it in my tent. It's all right, I'll get it. And, uh, Hoss will lead you on in. Look, look under there on the right. You'll find two canvas bags. That's Mexican silver. It's not worth much, but it's all I could salvage out of the last four years. The first stop we made when we came up out of Mexico was to try to convert it to money. I wanted to pay our way. We were accused of stealing it. We were set on by a posse. First time in the history of the regiment, we ran. Retreat. Very fast. Now, everything we've taken since is accounted for in our ledger. When Mr. Cartwright returns it to you, I want you to see that payments are made. The names and addresses are all there. Well, isn't that something you should do? I should, but it might not be possible. Excuse me, sir, but it's time to ride. To the commanding officer, Provost Marshal Station, Carson City. Subject, troop assignment. Urgent. The troops I ordered have not reported. If they are not en route, order them forward immediately. Sign my name and send it. Major Donahue, you've been wanting to have a talk with Mr. Ben Cartwright? I certainly have. He'd like for you to come over to my office and have it now. Cartwright? Major Donahue? Mr. Cartwright. Major. I didn't anticipate a friendly greeting after being ordered off your place by your son. Well, I hope he didn't exceed his rights in any way. He was cordially obstructive. But I wished only for him to cooperate. Yes, I believe he suggested the proper warrant. And your younger boy technically did kidnap one of my men. Uh, did you have the uh, warrant? On the other hand, technically, we did trespass. Of course, it's a matter of interpretation. We intended no threat. Do you have the warrant? And you did harbor that woman. Whether you conspired with her is a matter of your intention. Then you don't have the warrant, Major. I haven't applied for it. I preferred your willing assistance. To what end? The apprehension and arrest of Cody Ransom. On what charge, Major? <laughs> Come now, Cartwright. Ben, he does have a fugitive warrant. I've checked it. And Cody Ransom is wanted in Arizona Territory. Yes. So why don't we sit down, gentlemen? He's wanted on charges of robbery, horse thieving, cattle rustling, attempted murder. Yes, excuse me, here, where? Yes. Carrots, five cents. Squash, ten cents. Half old horse blanket, one dollar. Small spade, uh, flour, sugar, salt. And then you do know where they are. An itemized account of every single item that they've taken since they crossed the Mexican border. But why do they keep these accounts? Because they mean to pay up. With what? They got money, why'd they steal? Every time they show their face, somebody started shooting at them. Yes, Major. I know exactly where they are. I also know they're not the gang of criminals that we've heard about. They mean to make restitution and set the record straight in Arizona. You're guilty of conspiracy. Yes. Uh, technically. Where is Cody Ransom? I still haven't heard the charges against him. He was convicted of being an enemy agent in 1862 and sentenced to death. In New Orleans, under General Butler's command. Most of those convictions have been overturned, haven't they, Major? This one stands. Maybe that's only because this one hasn't been reviewed by the proper authorities in Washington. Here you go. Thank you, Joseph. Oh, Major, this is my son, Joseph, the kidnapper. Major? Oh, good. 
Joseph, why did you tell the Major why you went to Carson City? I went to try to confirm the story we got from Mrs. Cody Ransom. Or at least slow things down until we could dig out the truth. I have telegrams here from both of our senators and a letter from Governor Blasdell. I anticipated political interference. I've been victimized before. I took the precaution of wiring my commanding officer in Washington. Now, if you care to read the answer, you will find my authority confirmed. To arrest a formal rebel raider who avoided surrender by taking his troops into Mexico. Which surrender, Major? I beg your pardon. Well, as I recall it, Lee surrendered on April the 9th, uh, Johnson on the 26th, uh, Taylor not until May, and Kirby Smith at the end of May, I believe. Kirby Smith was Ransom's ultimate commander. Surrender is commonly synonymous with Appomattox. Kirby Smith did not surrender until May 26th, that is true. But on the 29th of May, on his way to Mexico, Cody Ransom engaged in a battle with federal troops and stole federal goods. Yes, uh, we heard about that. Yeah, I contacted Kirby Smith, Edmund Kirby Smith. He's now chancellor at the uh, University of Nashville. Uh, can I read this way? If it pleases you. A Ransom's regiment on detached service January through May 1865. Probable he did not receive surrender order before Sunday 4, June 65. It's a probable lie. One rebel protecting another. Kirby Smith was a turncoat, a West Point graduate and a turncoat. Why don't we cut to the heart of the matter? Cody Ransom is prepared to face the charges. Now, all he wants to do is surrender his regiment or what's left of it, officially and properly, so that its colors may be retired and his men paroled so that they may return home in peace and safety. Absolutely out of the question. Major, his wife and child are with him. Why don't you receive them with compassion, at least? Receive them? They're on their way here, now, to Virginia City. Sergeant, summon the men, on the double, mounted. Major, you'll answer for any violence you do. Ransom stole that woman from under me. He made a laughing stock of me. I'll talk about restoring him when my place on the promotion roster has been restored. But first, I'll have him on my terms. Forward! Oh! Oh! Stand aside, young man. Major Donahue? Move your men out of my way. Confidential orders for you, sir. Very well. Out of my way. I advise the Major to open those orders. You advise me, you Poppinjay. Make that Lieutenant Poppinjay, sir. Otherwise, Wells. Aide to General Philip Sheridan, Commanding General, Division of the Missouri. Now, I advise the Major to open those orders. Right in with Cody Ransom. I want a clarification of this order. I want to send a wire to St. Louis. I want a personal confirmation from Sheridan himself. If I'm going to be to court, he... he... Here, Major, why don't you just write it out yourself? Address the officer in command. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Edward Wells, headquarters and headquarters, Division of the Missouri. On detached service, sir. I am Cody Ransom, Colonel Commanding, 19th Arkansas Mounted Rifles. I wish to report 
the due and directed surrender of the officers, men, and the military equipage of my regiment. Sir, you may keep your sword. I request that the colors and the guidance be preserved. Sir, I have orders here which are to be read aloud to you and your men. With your permission, Mr. Cartwright. These orders are addressed to Lieutenant Wells. In view of its loyal and superior service to the cause of the late Confederate States, the surrender of the 19th Regiment of Arkansas Mounted Rifles is to be accepted with honors. Its colors and personal records to be remanded to the safekeeping of one of its paroled officers. In view of his own exemplary service, Colonel Cody F. Ransom is to be received with clemency and held free on his own recognizance. Pending full investigation of the allegations against him. And it's signed by... Yes, sir, I think the top three signatures. Yes. Among 20 some endorsing signatures, Colonel, are those of General W.T. Sherman, General Philip Sheridan, U.S. Grant, Commander-in-Chief. All right. Cody? Cody? See you later, then. Thanks again. Is my daddy going to get well, Uncle Ben? Of course he is, dear. It's going to take a little while, though. He's going to bring back some real good medicine and a friend of his, another doctor, to help him out. I can help out, too. Yes, he's going to need some good nursing and a lot of cheering up. I can tell him I love him. Well, why don't we go upstairs and you can tell him that right now. Yeah. Can I show him my bunny? I think that would be fine. Well, come on, let's go get it. Hush, your mellow, you men. Hopsing cook good food. Come eat. Come eat. We're ready. It's just that our stomach's a bit bulky. 